Okay, let's take a look at 3D models. A 3D model is a new base object type within Scenario VR, and it uses a new supported file type, GLB. GLB is a single file version of the GLTF format, which is the Graphics Library Transmission Format, or GL Transmission Format, which is an API neutral file format that allows you to have all of the files associated with a 3D model in a single file, including textures and animations. As with other files in Scenario VR, you can add them uh, by simply dragging and dropping them from the file system. Or you can click on the plus button and selecting the type, which brings up the new type, 3D model. Here you can select an appropriate file already in the scenario. Or you can click on the gray area to bring up the file system dialog to bring one in. Or you can drag and drop to the gray area, which will also load that in. The media library also contains many pre-built objects for you to use within your scenario. They're categorized into animals, food, objects, office, and sports as well as 3D shapes on this panel over here, which are simple 3D shapes. Let's go ahead and start by adding in an object. And we've added in an object into our scenario. Items can also be added just by clicking the half round arrow button on the right side of the editor window. Let's go ahead and look at the 3D shapes that are available here. And note, when I'm working with a 3D shape, I have the choice of colorizing those 3D shapes into any one of many colors that are available here, even custom colors. So if, for instance, I wanted to edit this custom color, I could edit this custom color, I could set it to any particular RGB or hex value that I wanted, and that would be my custom color. Now, once you get a 3D object within your scenario, you'll notice it's a little bit different to manipulate than a standard object. You have three tabs on the sides. Those tabs let you manipulate the object about the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. Like other objects, 3D models can have effects associated with them. So for instance, if I wanted this object to be spinning about the Y axis, I could simply set its effect to spin Y and then give it a duration. This object would then now spin as it's in. And since it's a hot spot, all of the normal hot spot effects will appear as well. So it will grow when I hover over it. Any standard effect can be added to the object. There are also animate actions that can be applied on. So for instance, with this cube, if I wanted to animate movement on this 3D object from this 3D object, I could do that by adding the animate action. So I would go into the action on select, I would animate, pick that object, and spin it about its y-axis. In this case, we'll just spin it once, and we'll spin it relatively quick. And there we go. Last point I want to touch on with uh, 3D models is animations built into models. So here we have a animation of a person, uh, an office, in a, an office character in a suit. 
uh, and he has built-in animations. Now, these are things that are built into the GLB model itself. You can get any kind of different animation built in, you know, walking, talking, flying, whatever you want, uh, built into your animation. Uh, this one has several animations built into it, and we're going to go ahead and trigger some of those animations. So let's start by default, giving him a default animation called idle, which is built into him. We'll use that as effect, so it's always there. So uh, you'll see that because he has a 3D model and he has an animation built into him, he has this new effect type, which is a 3D model animation. And we'll do that in with, we'll select the idle animation. So uh, the idle animation is just really something that is default. Say it's a small casual movement that gives them a lifelike quality. So let's take a look at what that looks like for this particular one. So you see just a small amount of movement gives them a little lifelike quality. Okay, well, let's go ahead and uh, do a little bit more with this character since he's got several built-in animations let's use a few of these so on this icon uh, we're going to uh, have him speak to us uh, i don't have the audio sound in here we'll just kind of show that you can animate it i could as well kick off an audio file at the same time but in this case i'm just going to animate that object and i am going to animate him with the 3d model animation and i get to pick which one i want these are all built into that one, I'll pick the speech animation built into it and I'll loop it and have it start right away. So it'll immediately go in to begin talking and stay in a loop and talking. Okay, on this one, I'll have him point. So again, uh, he's going to have an action. I'm going to uh, animate an object on screen. I'll animate the male office character. And when I select his animation, it'll be a 3D8 model animation and I'll go for his point animation. I won't loop it though, I'll just have it go once and it'll start right away. And on this one, I'm going to, uh, I have a choice here, it shows us as a stop, but rather than stopping an animation, we'll just stop, which will just stop it where it is. I'm going to have it actually uh, animate it back to default. So it'll actually go back to its idle animation that we had it in. So if I animate it back to default in this case, It'll go back to whatever is set for his default setting, which includes effects. So he'll be back in his idle animation. So let's take a look at how that works. So here he is in his idle animation. When I want him to talk, it goes into his talking loop. When it's time to point, I have him point once. Goes back to his idle loop. If I have him in talk, I can immediately just go back to the idle loop. So with these animations, you can kind of work it together to create just about anything you want. 